Se oi. Right, so a little while ago Skylum reached out and asked me if I wanted to try Luminar Neo for editing my photos. So I was like, all right Skylum, let's see what you've got. Now if you don't know what Luminar Neo is, it is a editing program based around AI tools and it can be used as either a standalone app or as a plugin for things like Lightroom and Photoshop. So you can still use your preferred app if you want to, but use the Luminar tools as well. Today I'm just gonna run you through some of my basics of editing you know, my basic editing process. And I'm gonna also show you how I use some of the tools or extensions inside of Luminar Neo. All right, so this is a relatively underexposed picture of Mike from our walk around York last week. So straight away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that exposure to where I think it needs to be. Now I'm gonna convert this to black and white because there's not a lot of color information in the scene. And I think it will just look better in black and white because I want just that silhouette. That's that's pretty much the, uh, the whole idea of this photo, right? So let's push the exposure up. Let's go up by about a stop or thereabouts. All right, that'll do. All right, so now that's brought out too much of the detail in the foreground, but that's fine because there is a tool or an extension inside of Luminar Neo called Relight AI, and it's one of my favorites to use. So I'm gonna use that on this photograph, right? So at the moment, uh, in terms of how this looks, it's actually pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert it to black and white, and then I'm gonna do the Relight AI. Now to convert to black and white, we simply go down to the black and white tab and right there, button converts to black and white. And as you can see, it's just done it, right? So now we can just play with the light and really bring through all those nice tones that you want. Now, this background area here in this alley behind Mike is where all the light is. And I want that to be enhanced even further. This foreground area and sort of the, the frame around Mike is darker and I'm gonna make that even darker. And I'm gonna do that with Relight AI. So the way I always do this is I bring my brightness for the foreground to pretty much where I want it. And I bring my brightness for the background to pretty much where I want it. And then I just adjust the depth after the fact. So once this is finished processing, I can then tweak the depth to make this work exactly how I want it to. Now, I think if I push the depth quite a way up, that's gonna give me something like the effect I want. It's practically right at the point where the light starts to naturally um, fade off. So I'm gonna do that like that, and I'm just gonna bring the, dark, the brightness in the foreground just down a little bit more, and then the far up a little bit more. And as you can see, it's really making Mike pop off now, so that's really good, okay. So what I wanna do is this side here, it's still a bit dark and this here because it's got this texture this is graffiti art it looks amazing but i didn't really get much of it in the scene so it's irrelevant to this particular picture so i'm going to put a vignette on there all right so i've chosen mike as my subject so now i'm going to bring the amount down to about minus 49 something like that and as we can see it's just taking the light edge off those sides that i don't want see now this Right, perfectly now frames, Mike. And to be honest, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much done. But I want to just add a little bit of something else to this. I feel like the background could probably be a little bit brighter to really, really finish this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Atmosphere tab and I'm going to add some fog. Now, this was a foggy day anyway, but you can't really see it in this scene. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that that background lighted area looks like this fog there, right? So we increase the amount and as you can see straight away, it's pushing into this side where I don't want it. So I'm going to push the depth so that it's only affecting, I'll bring the depth all the way down. So it's only affecting that far area there. And I honestly, I think that's pretty much done. So if we want to see the before and after, so that's where we started. That's where we are. That's perfectly fine for the socials. Moving on. All right, so this one, this was just shot with the 14 to 42 kit lens, but it's a cool picture. Um, but we do have that flat gray blown out sky. There was no detail there anyway. I don't care. It's irrelevant to the image. All I wanted was the whole building and the guy. That was it. So that sky, we're going to deal with that in a very specific way. But let's just go through the basic edit first and get some color back into this because it does look a little bit flat. So first things first, back to the raw develop tab. Change that to camera neutral for the EM1 Mark II. And then I'm just going to lift the shadows a little bit 
because this guy is wearing all black clothing and it's kind of, you know, just blending in there a bit too much. So I'm just gonna bring the exposure down a little bit and the highlights down a little bit just to stop the brightness in the sky from creeping into these white window frames and these windows up top there. The sky I don't care about, but um, I wanna get some color into this picture because it is looking a little bit flat. So let's add a little bit of vibrance in there. And then in terms of um, the basic development tab, I think that's pretty much done. So now we're gonna go down specifically to the color and to the HSL sliders. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push some saturation into the oranges to try and bring out that brickwork a little bit. I don't want it to go too far because it's gonna look disgusting. Maybe 25, push a little bit into the reds as well, before, after. Not a massive change, but it's enough to make, you know, to make the color stand out a little bit. Now, another thing I like to do on the hue is I like to bring my blues a little bit towards uh, the teal side. It's not sickly teal and orange overdone filter garbage. It's just to really enhance those contrasting colors of the brickwork and the bluish shadows. Once we've finished playing with the color, again, do the before and after. Personally, I think this is good practice. Whenever you're editing, whatever you're editing with, always check your before and after. It's so incredibly easy to overdo these things. And my personal approach is whatever I think is it, whatever I think is done, I usually either go away, come back to it and go, uh, or I just dial it back by about 30%, and usually that's fine for most things. Now, remember when I said I had an idea of what to do with that flat, boring sky? Normally, I would just put a radial filter on there and I would either do some negative dehaze or push the highlights just to make it bloom a little bit. In Luminania, there are a few ways you can do exactly that. You can use either the Orton effect slider or you can use the atmosphere to add fog up there and add that haze. So we're gonna do a, a little play around and figure out which one of those works best. But I am gonna use the Orton effect because I use it all the time. The Orton Effect is under the Glow tab and you go down to Orton Effect from the drop down menu and then you just slowly add that effect. Now, again, less is more with things like this and I don't really want this to um, overpower the image so I'm gonna keep it really low at um, eight. Now, there is also this Mystical tab which I, I quite like this. I think it works really well with the Orton Effect in the Glow tab. What it does, it kind of adds more glow but it also adds contrast at the same time as you can see if you just go crazy with it it looks mushy as hell but the contrast comes in so what we're going to do is we're going to find a nice balance with this image so i'm going to push it to about 10 9 so and you can just see the effect of it creeping in there again less is more deepen those shadows a little bit and if we look at the before and after not bad all right so one last image i want to show nighttime shot Got some nice bokeh in there. But one of the latest tools from the 2022 extensions for uh, Luminar Neo was the Magic Light AI. And it has some really cool effects. So I wanna show you how that works. So this has already been, this is an edited photo. This is a JPEG coming into Luminar Neo just to sort of give you an idea of what things could look like if you've edited it previously and just wanna use some of these effect extensions like Magic Light AI. And what this basically can do is when you take a exposure at night, if you wind down your f-stop to something like say f8, f9, you're gonna to start to see those starbursts, right? If you start applying, the, or increasing the intensity, as you can see, it starts adding those stars. Now, one thing I found that this does, which is actually really cool, and I don't know if it was intended to do this, but down here you see this number of beams, right? Now, this is the points of the, the stars that it creates. Now, if you pull that down to just two, you get this, what looks very much like the anamorphic effect. Now, if you just reduce the beam width a little bit, increase the clearness, increase the brightness, and increase the uh, size, you start to get this really quite pronounced anamorphic effect. Now, you could go in there and you could sort of color these to, um, you know, to get that orange stripes or the blue stripes that a lot of people use. But I thought this was a really cool way to use this magic light um, on an image like this, because basically what this does is it detects the artificial lights in the scene and it applies this effect to those artificial lights. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you found this insightful, enjoyable, other words, educational, 
leave a comment in the description below if you want to see more videos of this sort more editing from me please again leave a comment in the description below and i'll see you in the next one